When you need answers to your deepest, most vulnerable questions, where do you turn? Google, of course. And this made me curious about what would happen if I popped into Google, how to get over a toxic job. What would I find? Well, there was some good stuff, but amongst the top results, there was a lot of terrible toxic job recovery advice out there. So obviously I wanted to chat with my career besties about it. So in this video, I'm going to share with you the five worst toxic job recovery tips out there, all coming from patients page one of the search results. And make sure you stay for the last one because it's gonna be a rant that you do not wanna miss. Llama drama's gonna get fed. And just one quick note before we jump into it, I am not here to put anyone on blast. That's not my style. So I'm not going to be sharing full website screenshots. Now, if you go and find them, I don't want you leaving any hate, harassing anyone. We don't want to embarrass anyone. And of course, as I'm giving my opinions, they are just that, my opinions. And if you have followed the advice that has been given and it has worked for you, that is awesome. All right, enough of that. Let's jump into some terrible advice about how to get over a toxic job. If you're ready, tap the like button. Let's get in. So the first one doesn't seem so bad, but I have grievances with it, which we need to talk about. And that is to take time off. Now I've been pretty open in videos lately about how necessary I think taking time off is, taking vacation, taking care of yourself, all of those things. But I also know that most people, and in the surveys that I've done, so not you know statistically significant, I'm sure, however, I'm gonna count it for this purpose, more than half of the people that I have spoken with or surveyed have not been in a position where they could just quit their job, sit around on the couch, and hum kumbaya until they felt better. They need a paycheck in order to survive. I mean, if you don't have an income coming in, who's gonna pay your mortgage, your car payment, your student loans? Thankfully, you can still tap the like button for free. Last week, I shared a video where I dove into toxic work culture. And one of the things that I quite honestly, I should make a whole video on is the exploitive nature of toxic work culture. And these toxic jobs are creating a financial dependency. There's this whole toxic work philosophy of only paying people enough so that they don't leave. That means that I know a lot of you are not making enough to be sitting around Scrooge McDuck style in your bank of gold coins swimming around. And if you are, good for you. And I do think that there are steps that each of us can take as individuals to create our savings account, which you know I like to call an old fund. And that the presence of those resources are going to be extremely liberating and give you a lot of choices in your career. However, I think from a general advice, if I was putting this on a blog for all of the people in the world, I know that it's not something that's attainable for everyone. So that's why I kind of hated that that's what was popping up all of the time, because I know for most people, this needs to be smushed into they're already in their next job. Anyways, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. And if you are someone who has already exited a toxic job, did you take downtime in between jobs? Let me know in the comments down below. Now this next one, I'm, I must have ranted about this before because it is so superficial and just all levels of cliche. Literally one website said, take a bath and watch movies, ideally funny ones. Now, if someone can explain to me at what point self-care was reduced down to taking a bubble bath and when bubble baths actually receive this magical power of healing toxic work trauma, instead of just being water that you're sitting in that maybe you put some soap in. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not here to bash bubble baths and if they truly help you decompress, they make you feel happier, then you should go and sit in that tub until your heart's content. However, there is a difference between cheering yourself up when you're having a bad day or, or maybe in a rough mood, but that doesn't resolve the feelings, the sadness, the hurt, the embarrassment, the shame, all of the feelings that we feel when, when we're in a toxic work environment and as we're trying to heal from being in a toxic work situation. Toxic positivity is not the solution here. So do I think bubble baths, watching movies, getting your facial on or other stereotypical self-care things are bad? No. No, in fact, they may be part of your healing journey. However, doing those superficial things alone is not going to get you through your toxic job recovery. And this brings me actually to the next point, which is an offshoot of this one. However, this is one of the most toxic things and actually hurts the first one. And it's gonna make sense when I tell you what it is. <laughs> And that terrible toxic job recovery advice is to go on a shopping spree. Now, this is obviously a very privileged position because it's assuming, again, you just have those piles of money 
lying around. The reality for most people is, especially if they have suddenly left a toxic job because they quit their toxic job because they just couldn't handle it anymore, or they were fired by a toxic boss, the worst thing to do in the situation is to go and start setting your money on fire, buying things that you don't need. Practical reasons aside here, I'm not totally against emotional shopping. I'm guilty of doing emotional shopping. I'm just abundantly aware of what I'm doing it. What this advice is really telling you is to go and deploy a negative coping mechanism in order to placate your perceived negative emotions. To me, this advice is the same as telling someone to just go get absolutely wasted in order to get over their toxic job. Just go and drink until you forget about it all. Now this might not be shopping, it might not be drinking, perhaps it's eating, perhaps it's sitting in front of the television for hours on end, or something else. These are negative coping mechanisms that we're doing in order to make ourselves feel better to artificially lift up our dopamine, if you will. But we need to be clear on two things. When you're doing these things, especially when you're doing these things without control, they are not healthy and they are not productive to your toxic job recovery. So while I'm all for treating yourself to something, what I would suggest is to swap those out with some more positive and productive coping mechanisms. So instead of going on an online shopping binge, maybe call a friend and have a chat. Instead of forgetting all your worries in a bottle of wine, mine not that I've ever done that. Go out for a walk and enjoy nature or a good rage run. Those ones are my favorites. Ultimately, we all have coping mechanisms. You have coping mechanisms in order to survive the toxic job. What you wanna make sure is that the coping mechanisms that you're using and especially the coping mechanisms that you're using on a regular basis are not hurting your mind, are not hurting your body, they're not hurting your relationships and they're not hurting your bank account. All right, what have we got next? <laughs> you know this one is gonna be one that I just absolutely hate and there's so many levels of my feelings on this one. Be open with your new work family. If you've subscribed to my channel and you've been hanging out with me for a while, you already know my position on this whole work family BS thing. Work life family is a lie. If you haven't watched that video, you need to watch it after this one. So instead of fixating on the toxicity of the work family, what I would like to dig into here is why it's such a terrible idea to tell your new coworkers about your toxic job experience. First of all, and I'm gonna tell this to you straight, when you were in your toxic job and you were complaining after work to your friends, to your family, to your partner, to the people in your life, how many of those people really understood you? We've talked here before about how most people don't really understand a toxic job until they have been in a toxic work environment themselves. And it's kind of conflated with a bad job or bad work environment equals toxic job, toxic work environment, when they're two separate things. Now, I want to ask you this. If your friends and your family don't understand the experience that you had in the toxic work situation, why would your new coworkers at your new job understand your toxic work environment? And honestly, how it's perceived by a lot of people is that you're just complaining or trashing your former employer, which actually brings me to the second reason why that's a terrible idea. And that is because trashing your old company makes you look bad. And finally, in my opinion, all this advice does is tell you to bring your baggage from one toxic job and to drop it in another. At best, it's trauma dumping and it's gonna lead to a lot of weird relationships with your new coworkers and your new boss, depending on who your work family is. And also because you're bringing that corporate drama into this new work environment, you're actually staging more corporate drama potentially and creating a new toxic work environment for yourself, which is absolutely not the thing that you wanna be doing. So just like your personal life, set a boundary, your new job is your new job, what happened at your last job doesn't need to come into your new job as much as possible. And this is actually key to your toxic job recovery and recreating career trajectory that you might have lost in your toxic job. Now that brings us to our fifth piece of terrible toxic job recovery advice. And I saved the worst for last. Now buckle in my friends, grab yourself a bevy because this one is going to be a full stop rant. It can be summarized as blame yourself because saying reflect on what you could have done differently is absolutely saying it's a you problem. 
where do I even start with this one? So first of all, is it possible that you were the toxic employee or that you developed toxic work behaviors as a coping mechanism in a previous toxic work environment and ended up creating a toxic workplace again for yourself? Yes, it is possible. But blaming people who have been bullied, abused, and exploited at work is beyond vile. An estimated 20% of corporate executives could be diagnosed as being psychopaths. I have a whole video on that. We also know that bad leadership, lack of leadership training, and toxic work behaviors are somewhat commonplace out there in the real corporate world. So let's be clear on this. This is really, really important. If you have a toxic boss who undermines, demeans, and or harasses you, it is not your fault. That's a them issue. That's on your toxic boss. When your toxic boss is holding you to impossible standards, not assigning you work, moving the goalposts, doing all the things that toxic bosses do, you're not going to be able to please them and you're not going to be able to change them. All that you can do in that situation is cope as best you can and minimize the damage to yourself and your career. You can do the best job possible and create as much good impact as you possibly can under the circumstances. Now, if you have toxic coworkers, that might be a little bit of a different situation. However, if you're dealing with toxic coworkers who are bullying you, sabotaging your work, doing all the things that we've talked about about a million times on my channel, again, you are not going to be able to please them, change them, or make them not toxic. Now, at some point in your toxic job recovery, there is a time for accountability. I am a huge advocate for accountability, and anyone who's worked directly with me knows that. However, when you are in a toxic job or you've recently left a toxic job and you're trying to figure out a way to get over that toxic job and you're literally Googling to figure out how to feel better, that's not the time to start blaming yourself because I know many of you are already blaming yourselves. You're blaming yourselves for staying too long. You're blaming yourselves for permitting the behavior. You're blaming yourself for taking the job in the first place. Blame, 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 blame. You do not need any more of that at the point of exit from a toxic job. You can do the self-reflection when you have rebuilt your self-confidence and you have rebuilt your self-worth and you have restored your belief in your own awesomeness. But most people that are leaving a toxic work environment are so far from being ready from that that this isn't only negligent advice, this is dangerous. And while I'm the only one I know of that has a dedicated offering on toxic job recovery, there's a lot of career coaches who talk about it, who aren't fully informed. And it's so on trend to talk about toxic jobs, whether you really know about them or not. So ultimately, when you read or hear advice, whether it's from me or anyone else on the internet, what I want you to do is to question it and say, does this feel right for me? Does this feel good? Or is this hurting? Or is it just doing nothing at all? Which actually brings me directly to one point that I really wanted to include in this video as a bonus, and that is how to actually recover from a toxic job. First of all, shameless plug, register for my toxic job recovery workshop. It is going to be running live in a few weeks. I would love to see you there. If that is something that you feel like you're ready for and you wanna learn about the toxic job recovery cycle and particularly make sure that you don't fall into the toxic job loop. And also, if you haven't already, make sure Sure you subscribe because I have a series of videos that are going to be coming out that are completely focused on toxic job recovery. And then, because I don't want you to have to sit around and wait for anything, I want you to go and watch this video right now where I give an overview on toxic job recovery. But before you go, if this video helped you, if you enjoyed it, tap the like button, it really helps my channel and it makes you my favorite career bestie. Consider subscribing if you haven't already and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.